Hey! Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin. If you are new here, welcome. If you are back, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use Print and Cut like a pro on your Silhouette Cameo. I will be doing a Cricut calibration and Print and Cut in the future, so do keep a lookout for that. And it doesn't need to be complicated. I know that some people do struggle with this. Their machine doesn't cut properly and that's why I am going to also cover calibration in this video. So I will put timestamps in the video description if you want to navigate to certain parts of the video. I've got some exciting news as well. I'm busy working on a Cricut beginner, intermediate and advanced course and that will be available on my website to download. The beginner will be completely free so you're welcome to go and check it out. I will definitely let you know once that is ready. It does contain some free downloadables and also some mini exercises. With all of that being said I hope you enjoy the video. If you do have any questions do let me know in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. To enable registration marks in Silhouette Studio, I'm going to open the page setup panel and then you just want to make sure that your machine feed type, the cutting mat and the media size are correctly set up. For my cutting mat, I am using the 12 by 12 inch, I'm using the Cameo 5, my feed type is auto. And then my media size for print and cut, I typically use A4. If you're in the US, you'll probably use the letter size. I'm going to exit out of the page setup panel and then I'm going to open the textile panel and then I'm going to click on enable registration marks. If you scroll further down you'll see that there are some advanced settings and this allows you to change the length of the registration marks, the thickness and the inset. If you've made a mistake, you can always restore them to the defaults. There is a little drop down menu here with more settings, and this allows you to adjust the left, top, right, and bottom inset. You can also invert your registration marks. Again, if you made a mistake or you just want to restore them back to the defaults, you can definitely do that by clicking on Restore Defaults. I'm going to exit out of here, and now we're ready to bring in our design. To break in my design, I'm going to click on File and then Merge. And I'm going to just locate my design on my computer. And I'm just going to choose this one. You might need to repeat this process if you have multiple stickers. And then I'm going to click on my design and I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. Okay, so for this video, I do want to make some die cut stickers. That means that it cuts all the way through, so it's not a kiss cut sticker. And to do that, I am going to give my design an offset. You don't have to give your designs offsets, but typically for stickers, that's normally what people go for, and it just looks aesthetically nice. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just remove the border. So I'm just going to click on None, and then I'm going to go to the Send panel. I'm going to select my design and then I'm going to click on ignore selected lines. I'm going to go back to design and then I'm going to go to the offset panel and I'm going to give my design an offset of about three millimeters. I'm going to hit apply, exit out of there and then I'm going to go back to the send panel and I'm just going to make sure that my offset line is selected to tool one, use all selected lines, and this will cut out the offset. For my cut settings, I am using matte sticker paper. So I just selected sticker paper white, and then I am going to be using my auto blade. And then the force is 14, the passes is one, the speed is eight, and I am going to adjust the blade setting to about eight because I want this to be a die cut sticker. If you want a kiss cut sticker, I would probably recommend about a blade depth of two or three, just depending on how sharp your blade is. Keep in mind that you can always do a test cut just to make sure that everything is correct, the settings are correct instead of wasting a whole sheet of paper. So off camera, I went ahead and set up my sticker sheet. 
and I'll be doing two of them. So for the one, I will be doing the default registration marks. And for the second one, I will be doing adjusted registration marks. So what I did was just thicken up the registration marks. And then I also changed the inset. So I was able to fit two more stickers on the sheet, reducing the inset. So it can be really helpful if you're trying to save material. It's also really important to note that once you print this out, you cannot move any of these designs. If you do, your Cameo is not going to cut them out properly. So don't touch the designs once you've printed it out. If you do change any of the designs, you will need to print this out again and then send it to your Cameo. So let's go ahead and print out my sticker sheets. So I'm gonna start with a default registration and I'm just gonna show you the print settings. So to do that, I'm gonna click on file, print, and then it will bring up the print preview. And then I'm gonna click on print and you wanna locate your printer. I am using a Canon G3020 series. It is an ink tank printer. And then I'm gonna click on preferences and for my media type, when I'm doing stickers or anything that's printing cut, if I'm using cardstock, I like to use photo paper plus glossy too. And I just find that that gives me the best results. For my print quality, I've set it to high and then my paper size is A4. Again, if you're in the US, you might need to just select letter size. And then I will just repeat this process for the second sheet that I'm gonna do. This is the default registration mark sheet that I printed. The colors turned out beautifully and both of my sheets cut perfectly. This is the adjusted registration marks and you can see that I was able to fit more stickers on a sheet. When cutting your stickers, make sure that the edges of the sticker sheet are properly aligned with the grid lines on your cutting mat. This is also an important step because any misalignment will mean your machine doesn't cut in the right place. Your mat should be loaded right up against the arrow underneath the rollers on your machine. When you press send in Silhouette Studio, your machine will begin scanning the registration marks. Make sure you're in a well-lit area for this process and there's nothing obstructing the back of your machine. So you might find that your machine cuts way off and that is where calibration comes in. I would not recommend calibrating your machine if it is cutting perfectly fine. There is no need to calibrate it. My machine did not need to be calibrated, but for the sake of the video, I thought, well, let me just go ahead and do it. But at the end, I actually canceled everything and I didn't actually calibrate it because it's not necessary. But if yours is cutting way off or, or if the distance is off, then it might be something that you need to do. So to enable calibration, we're going to go to the send panel. We're going to right click on this little drop down menu where you select your machine. Right click on it and click on calibration. Right off the bat, we see some lines, green squares and crosses. These are calibration marks you're going to print out in order to calibrate your machine. The points from A to B and one to two are distance lines. And these can be used to adjust distance. 
For example, if you have a square that measures 5 centimeters but your Cameo is cutting at 4 centimeters, then this is a distance adjustment. First, we'll go over calibration. To start off, you'll need to print out a test page using copy paper. Place this on your cutting mat as seen in Silhouette Studio. When loading your mat, make sure to load it up against the arrow on your machine. On your Cameo or in Silhouette Studio, use the arrows to place your blade in the green square. Once you're happy, click on Calibrate. Your Cameo will scan the registration marks and cut. You're going to repeat this process for every single cross. Once done, measure the horizontal and vertical offset of the cut and adjust this in Silhouette Studio using the ruler sliders. Once you've selected your measurements, hit exit and you're done. If your Cameo cut on the crosses perfectly, then you won't need to calibrate your machine. Next, we'll look at distance adjustment. For distance adjustment, go ahead and use the same calibration sheet or print out a new one. Load the mat into the machine and once you're ready, click on cut test lines. This will cut small lines from points A to B and 1 to 2. After cutting, measure the distance between these two points. The distance between them should measure 200 millimeters. If they don't, adjust this using the ruler sliders in Silhouette Studio. You can always restore this to the original settings. Once you're happy, click on exit and Silhouette Studio will automatically save your calibration. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do you check out some more videos below and give me some support, like and share, subscribe, all those good things. And I'll see you in the next craft video. Bye.